stars in the sky look down with me. The little Lord Jesus asleep on the hill. Hi, I'm Joe, and welcome to the channel. Before we get to the breakdown, I wanted to mention that Away in the Manger really makes a great song for anyone to learn at any level. There's certain things in this arrangement such as slash chords, so if you're not familiar with playing chord inversions, we're going to learn some of those. There's techniques involved such as bringing your thumb over the neck to play bass notes. There's also the root chord strumming pattern where you're going to hit a root note and then strum the chord. And also, this song is in 3-4 time, which is a lot different than probably the 4-4 time that you're more familiar with. Another great thing is this is a song that's very familiar to you. So it's always great to learn new things and new techniques on songs that you already know what they sound like in your head. It just makes the learning process a lot easier than tackling a brand new song that you've never heard before. Let's go ahead and dive in and break the song down. Let's go ahead and look at the intro. The intro is also used to break up the different verses of the song as well. The basic chord structure would be G, D, E minor, D. But we're going to do something a little bit different. To have more of a, like a descending bass line, we're going to use a chord inversion on the D chord. And to spice things up a little bit more, instead of using a traditional E minor chord, we're going to do an E minor 7 chord. So that's going to look like this, G, then bringing your thumb over the neck, grab your F sharp here, which would be your third of your D chord, right? D, F sharp, A, play that. And then for E minor, the E minor shape traditionally looks like this. Well, since our fingers are conveniently placed this way, we can use our first two fingers and place them in the E minor shape. So our first finger is going to be on the second fret of the A string, and also their second finger is going to be on the second fret of the D string. This is our E minor. But on top now, since we left our D down, that gives us a minor 7. And what's nice too is, instead of playing the traditional open E string on the top, we're actually adding a G down here as well, which is a third. So it's just a prettier chord voicing for the E minor chord. Again, it's the root chord strumming pattern that I talked about in the intro. So that's basically hit the root note and then down two strums. Since the song is in 3-4 time, which means there's three beats per measure of music, we're going to basically play a quarter note for each of these values. So quarter note for the root and then strum for the next two. So we're going to count one, two, three, one, two, three. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Now that's a little faster than I played in the song itself, but I just wanted to show you quickly what I meant by the root chord strumming pattern. So what's nice about doing this chord inversion, we have now have this descending bass line. If you just listen to the bass, and then it ascends, comes back up. So all together, it's going to sound like this. Now you can play that twice like I did or just one time through. It's really up to you. If you have another player or another instrument, playing like a little bit of a solo or intro on top of that, that'll sound nice as well. So the verse chords, there's a few of them in this, but since we're doing that root chord strumming pattern, it really helps you facilitate switching the chords quicker. And we're going to add movement with that by using, again, chord inversions inside of the chords. So let's start off with the first part of the verse. It's going to be G. And it's another G, but this time we're going to do a first inversion again, a, a chord inversion or a slash chord. We're going to play G over B, which basically means since we already have our G here, if we just lift that up, we have our B note right here on the A string where our first finger is. So we're just going to play that and then strum twice. And again, leaving the same shape at the top, why don't we go ahead and put down our C, add nine chord. So basically, this looks like your G chord, but just these top two fingers are one string down. 
So what I like about this is we have that walking bass. And we also have that continuity of those two notes on top ringing out. And we go right back to the G. So overall, the first part of the verse goes G, B over G, or I should say G over B, <laughs> C, add nine, back to G. Now we're gonna come to a D7. So we're gonna basically do our standard D7 shape here, and we're just gonna do the root strumming. And that's for two measures. And now we're going to do another chord inversion, but this time we're going to do a C with a G in the bass. So we all know our C chord like this. Well, if we take our third finger and move it up one string to hit the G on the E, e string, we now have a C over G chord. And then we can lift that up to get back to G, which is after that. So let me just play that all together here for the D7. The second half of the verse starts the same way the first one did. So we're going to do the G, the G over B, to the C at 9, back to the G. Now, the last part of the verse starts the same way, going to the D7 that we learned before. But instead of staying on that D7, we're going to go back to G. And now we're going to do a quick chord vamp. We're going to basically go C, A minor, D7, G. So in context, I'm going to pick it up from the second part of the verse. It goes like this. What's great about that little section there, it really teaches you to switch those chords quickly and in time and changing your chord shapes. Now what's nice about this change though is, if you look, you have your C here, and to be efficient, all you need to do to get to the A minor is to sneak your third finger behind and leave all your other fingers down. So that's a nice quick move. and. To jump over to the D7, if you notice, your fingers are kind of already lined up and prepared to just switch strings quickly to get to the D7. But it's almost the same type of shape. What I mean by that is your first two, your first, your bottom two fingers, I should say, are going to stay on the same plane of the second fret, and your first finger is on the first fret. But it's going to stay there, just grabbing that D7, and then you're going to come back to the G. So again. It's very quick, and you can just practice that section. If that gets a little tough at first, just sit there and start slow. And then speed it up. It's just a great little exercise to get used to switching chords quickly. And again, the key for that, and I made a video on this earlier, is to always try to think efficiently. Try to think, what fingers can I leave down and alone, or in a position that's already set up to move to the next chord. You don't need to pick up your whole hand like that. You can just basically leave your fingers down where it's efficient. So that's the entire song. And the arrangement that you can do is play the intro, then go to a verse, insert the intro part again, go into the verse, and you can even end on that intro. After this section, I'll go ahead and insert the entire performance for you so you can get a feel for how I basically arranged the song by using those intro sections, moving into the verses, and ending the song. Well, that's it. I hope you found some value in this video. If you did, please do me a favor and consider supporting the channel for free. All you need to do is subscribe down below, hit the like button, and knock on the bell and you'll be notified when the next video comes out. Thank you as always for your time. I appreciate it.
Jesus laid down his sweet head. The stars in the sky look down with he lay. The little Lord Jesus asleep on the hill. Down from the sky and stay by my cradle till morning is night. Be near me, Lord Jesus, I ask thee to stay. Close by me forever and love me, I pray. Bless all the dear children in thy tender care and fit us for heaven to live with.